I'll try to go. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. My name is Kim Robinson. I'm president and CEO of the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, and I'm very pleased to welcome you uh, to the historic banks of the Ohio River today. What a beautiful and exciting afternoon we have in store for you. The mission of the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center is to reveal stories of freedom's heroes from the era of the Underground Railroad to contemporary times, always challenging and inspiring everyone to take courageous steps for freedom today. Through these stories, the characteristics of courage, cooperation, and perseverance are celebrated by the Freedom Center. They were essential to the eradication of slavery and have been a catalyst for all freedom movements, past, present, and future. The Freedom Center has a long history of partnerships that help us inspire people. Xavier University and the University of Cincinnati have been key among these partnerships over the last several years. I am very excited to welcome you here today and to share details of a new partnership Joining me today are many leaders from the universities and from our community, if you please allow me to introduce them. From the University of Cincinnati, President Greg Williams, to my left and your right, uh, UC Athletic Director Whit Babcock, and UC Men's Basketball Coach Mick Cronin. To my right and your left, Xavier University President Father Michael Graham, Xavier Athletics Director Mike Babinski, and Xavier Men's Basketball Coach Chris Mack. I'd also like to introduce several guests in the audience today. Uh, a longtime friend of mine and former p and like me, Terry Donovan, Executive Vice President of Skyline Chile. Ray Harris, CEO of U.S. Bank Arena. Reverend Damon Lynch, Jr., co-chair of the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center. Hi, Reverend Lynch. Doug McDonald and Francie Hiltz, CEO and board co-chair, respectively, of the Cincinnati Museum Center. Christian Sigmund of... I can't read my writing. Uh, Christian Sigmund, take a bow, please. <laughs> John Dietrich from the City of Cincinnati and the Banks Public Partnership. Jim Marline from the Holy Grail. Tracy Schwegman from Carter Dawson, the developer of the Banks Project. Steve Shuckman is representing Willie Carden in the Cincinnati Parks. And I'm just thrilled to have the opening of the new John Schmell Park down here. It's beautiful. If you haven't been, you have to go. David Ginsburg from Downtown Cincinnati Incorporated and the DCI Board. Mark Reitzitz, President of Huntington Bank. Leslie Spencer, Executive Director of the Greater Cincinnati Sports Corporation. And any others that I may have missed, I'm sure there are others here that uh, certainly are deserving of being mentioned to them. I apologize. Now it's my privilege to invite my friends to the podium, Xavier President Father Graham and UC President Williams for their important and exciting announcement. Good. Thank you, Kim. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you all for joining us here to celebrate another great, great Reds victory and some other stuff besides. As you know, the annual tradition of the Crosstown Shootout has always been an exciting highlight in greater Cincinnati and beyond. It's a point of pride and a celebration of great college basketball between two high-quality universities, Xavier University and the, and the University of Cincinnati, and we intend very much for that to continue. But Xavier and the University of Cincinnati don't just compete on the court. We collaborate in the community. Our schools have worked together on such notable initiatives as STRIVE, which is aimed at, at improving student achievement from cradle to career. With that in mind, Dr. Williams and I are here today to announce not only a new name and other details about the game, but a new dimension as well to this competition based on our histories of collaboration and community engagement. The new name for this event will be the Skyline Chile Crosstown Classic. And more importantly, it will benefit a great community partner. 
but I'll leave it to Dr. Williams in a few moments to speak more about that partner. The game will be held on Wednesday, December 19th, and will be played at the U.S. Bank Arena. The exact time has not yet been set because we're still discussing broadcast opportunities, uh, but we, we expect it most likely to be televised on ESPN in the evening. The game will be played at U.S. Bank Arena for two years. This year, the University of Cincinnati will be the home team, and next year it will be Xavier's turn. As I mentioned, this collaboration goes beyond the basketball court and continues to grow. For example, our school's new provosts and chief academic officers have already been in conversation with one another about how the two schools might collaborate more fully in terms of academic programs and faculty life. Meanwhile, last spring, our student governments partnered to work with the Boys and Girls Club here in Greater Cincinnati together, and those student leaders are already talking about what they might do this coming year to build upon that. Welcoming a beneficiary and a community partner of the Skyline Chili Crosstown Classic builds on this commitment of collaboration and celebrates the good things each of our schools does in the community, and especially those things that we do together. But I'll leave it to Dr. Williams to share that good news with you. Greg? Thank you, Father Graham. As Father Graham has mentioned, the University of Cincinnati and Xavier University have a long history of collaboration. And this is just the latest example of UC and Xavier working together. And we have a tremendous source of pride for both of our universities, our fans, alumni, our hometown of the city of Cincinnati. And Father Graham and I are really delighted about the prospects for this game with its new focus on the city, the exciting waterfront, and the values that both of our institutions share in common. As noted last week in the New York Times in a great article in the Cleveland Plain Dealer recently, Cincinnati has an exciting new renaissance underway, especially along the banks of the Ohio River. Playing our game at a neutral site at the waterfront supports this wonderful revival and brings it to a part of our city that is a brand new riverfront development that deserves to be celebrated and to be supported. Our universities wanted to find a way to remind everyone that we play this game in the spirit of mutual respect and celebration. We want to celebrate the values that we share in common, and we want to celebrate the city of Cincinnati. As Father Graham mentioned, we're adding a community partner that will benefit from our basketball competition. The tradition and addition of the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center as a beneficiary and as a partner in our rivalry game for the next two years, not only fits in with our commitment to the Riverfront Revival, it fits in with the values that both UC and XU share. Among them, respect, integrity, freedom, opportunity, community, scholarship, and excellence. In addition, we know that our universities all support and share the values that align to the Freedom Center and what it stands for courage, cooperation, and perseverance. The Freedom Center is a tremendous asset, not only for this community, but in fact, for our nation. It deserves our support and the support of the community, as well as visitors from across the nation and in fact, around the world. And now Father Graham and I will officially unveil the new logo for the Skyline Chili Crosstown Classic. It's pretty. I like it. Uh, at this time, we're going to take questions from the audience. I wanted everyone to know that both the presidents and the coaches have to leave for other engagements. And so we're going to stay long enough to get your questions. We have open mics in the audience. So if you raise your hand, somebody will come to you and you can ask your question. I would just advise now would be the right time to ask the question. Uh, and we'll take the time to do that. So who wants to go first? Uh, Shannon Russell, Cincinnati Inquirer. This question is for uh, the presidents. You know, UC and Xavier have had a very long history together, a very long rivalry. How do you think the neutral site will impact that, that rivalry? 
Well, we thought it was important to remind everyone that this is a basketball game uh, among two uh, rivals that care a great deal about each other, but we thought we needed to think about a new way to express uh, uh, the, the competition and the collaboration together. That's the reason why we felt it was important to celebrate the city, to add the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center as a partner, which we think epitomizes the things that we stand for and also shows our support for the institutions in the city of Cincinnati, and particularly the Underground Railroad Freedom Center, which I personally think is a national icon. Shannon, it occurs to me that if there's anything that Xavier and UC people are passionate about more than the game and more and, and about more than their schools, it's the community itself. And so I'm looking forward to the way in which this sort of new reframing of the game and this new uh, point of departure uh, will allow all of Cincinnati to come together in a real moment of celebration about some things that are very important to us. Uh, to follow up on that, you guys are going to be having um, fans from both schools, obviously, in the same place. Do you, are you concerned about the friction between those fans? We, uh, we aren't the... We aren't the uh, first school uh, to try a neutral site uh, for uh, a big deal sports event. Uh, there are plenty of places uh, that have done this uh, where, where folks um, ha have a great deal of passion uh, uh, around the game, and those things have come off well. Uh, and so we're very confident that in working with the folks at the uh, at U.S. Bank Arena uh, that we're going to be able to put together a, a very good plan. And, of course, the premise of it uh, is that our fans themselves um, will uh, come to the game with a great deal of of pride and enthusiasm for a great athletic contest and, and, and will uh, act in a completely appropriate way and so there'll be no need for those folks at U.S. Bank Arena to do a thing. I share Father Graham's concern or, and uh, that there's not really going to be any issues. It's a great competition and we're looking forward to celebrate it at the uh, Bank uh, Arena. Uh, for... Oh. For the 80s, um, can you talk about your experience uh, with neutral site games in the past um, in other places, if you have any? Go ahead. You want to talk about the Missouri, Illinois? Uh, yes, thank you. I, uh, I I do have some experience around those. It's a uh, it's a unique and exciting event. Not many not many sports fans um, get to attend a true 50-50 crowd event. And uh, while I worked at the University of Missouri, we had a great long-standing rivalry with Illinois, a neutral site there at St. Louis. Uh, there was the signature event of the holiday season. I think this game can become that here. And then we had some neutral site uh, games with Kansas and football in Kansas City. So um, it's an electric environment. It's one that not many people have experienced, but once they, once they do, uh, I'm, I'm confident it will be a, a great success. There's, there's never a play where somebody's not cheering, that's for sure. And, and Shannon, to add to that, uh, you know, I spent five years at the Naval Academy in the course of my career, and, and the Army-Navy rivalry is probably the quintessential de depiction of how it's supposed to be because there's a tremendous amount of respect between those two institutions. But they, they think about each other in, in a competitive way each and every day. Uh, but that, that game in every, in every Army-Navy competition, not just the football game, but everything else that they do is done. And the football game's always been a neutral site. And it's, it comes off in, in the most, it's the most spectacular thing you've ever seen. Uh, and that, that to me is the, is the absolute ultimate model of, of, of how a neutral site game can come off between two rivals that, that you know, want to win in the absolute worst way, but share a really deep respect for each other at the end of the day. And, and, and when it's over, it's over, and you move on to the next day. Why the two-year trial period, and is there a long-term commitment from both teams to continue to play this game for the ADs or the coaches? Sure, around the game. Um, and we felt that this was the appropriate venue and place to do that, and we are going to be evaluating it on a year-to-year -year basis. We felt uh, make a appropriate commitment to have it down here for the next couple of years, uh, but obviously we will reevaluate on a year-to-year -year basis uh, to tr try to create a new culture of the game and approach. Yes, exactly. That, that we thought that rather than make a sort of once and for always forever kind of commitment, what we want to do is, as uh, uh, President Williams said, is uh, shape uh, a new culture around the game um, and to uh, keep evaluating it and to see what we can do to improve it as we go forward. So um, I think our commitment is to the game um, and the stuff surrounding it. Well, we'll see how that goes. One more question for Coach Mack and Coach Cronin. How do you think your players will thrive on the neutral site, not necessarily having that home court advantage in previous years? Go ahead, Chris. Well, I think 
Number one, the atmosphere um, is going to be one that if you're a player, how can you not want to play in that type of environment? You know, it's, uh, um, you know, Witt had mentioned the Missouri-Illinois game, which is a game that I've watched, uh, whether as a fan or as a college coach, for a long time. And, and boy, those teams really compete at a high level. Um, and, and it's a supercharged environment. And I think, um, you know, the, the game itself has always been uh, a very hard-fought, uh, a very um, uh, worthwhile game for the city. And whether the floor is over at U.S. Bank Arena, University of Cincinnati or Xavier, uh, it's going to be a great game. And I think both teams will uh, uh, really enjoy playing in the atmosphere. Two things. Uh, first of all, I think our guys love these games, so that's you know they don't care where we play it, to be real honest about it. I think from Chris and I, uh, the neutral site is great because we both hope to play in the NCAA tournament every March. So anytime you get a chance to play a big-time game in a neutral site, uh, it's an advantage for your team. Uh, so, and also, US, we, we've played games at U.S. Bank Arena historically at, at UC, so uh, we haven't lost down there in a while. So I was, I was all for this, although I think that, that's going to be put to the test now. We haven't lost there in a while either. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I guess this question is for, I don't know, for the presidents or the ADs. There, you had a lot of options with this game, um, not playing it, taking a break from it. Um, also, a lot of the guys that were suspended from last year's games are now gone from their programs. Um, did you consider returning to the schools or, or taking a break? We felt that we wanted to have a game that everyone in the city of Cincinnati would be proud of, and we felt to do that we needed to create a new culture about the game, and the best way to do that was to do that at a neutral place, and so that's why Father Graham and I had a number of discussions, and that's where we ended up, that this would be a good place to begin that culture. Then there was a great opportunity for us to celebrate the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, uh, because it is truly a national icon. Um, it's uh, something that we want to celebrate in the community. Uh, the University of Cincinnati and Xavier University supports many institutions, and so we wanted to be very clear that uh, we were continuing to be behind institutions in the city of Cincinnati. From my perspective, Shannon, um, uh, I believe that the game belongs to the community uh, and that Greg and I as, are, as it were, its custodians at the moment. Uh, and so for us to be able to have the game in a way that reminds people of the larger context of the game, I think is completely appropriate. So it was uh, as, as the um, discussions developed and we began talking about the possibilities of coming down here, celebrating the banks, the great movement forward, the Underground Railroad Freedom Center is a as a community partner, that all that just made an enormous amount of sense in terms of, of uh, reminding people that this is, after all, just a game. You know, it's a very important game, uh, one that a lot of people get very passionate about, and that's a great thing. Um, but there's much more that unites us than divides us, and let's keep a focus on that. changing the culture uh, around the game and, and things like that. What are some of the things that you guys had as far as discussions to change the culture, not only with everyone else, but the players and, and things you can do outside of just playing the game to bring the two schools together? There are a series of conversations going on, as I indicated in my remarks, about getting sort of constituencies from uh, both the schools together. And so one of those sets of conversations is going to involve the coaches, the ADs, and the basketball players. And so though we don't have any details yet, and we'll look forward to sharing with those with the community at an appropriate time, it's our intention to find ways of getting the players involved here, for example. Um, and so, as I said, we'll be forthcoming about that um, as those plans develop. I, I'm not sure who to direct this to, but it says in the press release that the, the uh, ticket sales will be split between both schools, but a portion will go to uh, the Freedom Center. What percentage will go to the Freedom Center? Well, we haven't worked out the details exactly, but there's going to be a substantial portion that will go to the Freedom Center to express our desire to support the Freedom Center. Um, and we're looking forward to be a contributor to the Freedom Center and the types of things that they're doing here. 